Hey everyone, welcome to the Bad Racer channel. Two weeks ago, I unboxed the Logitech Pro Direct Drive Wheel and the Logitech Pro Low Tail Pedals. There is a video on the channel that you can check out. In this video, if you're watching, it's probably because you want to know a little bit more about it. So through a lot of trial and error, hopefully, I've got the answers that you might be looking for. So let's start. We're gonna start at the top and work our way down. So we'll start with the wheel first. So best feature about this little wheel is the way it comes on and off. So simply hands behind the wheel, pull it towards you, and it will slide off. So on the back there, you've obviously got your gear paddles. These are clutch paddles. I've actually changed this one here to a handbrake when I'm playing Gran Turismo, just nice and easy to reach when you need it, if you need it. This is set up, I assume, that it is compatible with other wheels when Logitech release them onto the market. But for now, this is the only one that we have. And it goes on as easy as it came off. There we go, just like that. This is what you see from the front. Obviously, you've got your square, triangle, X and circle, easily accessible with either thumb when you're playing. You've got this cool little um, like joystick almost, which I think is quite a nice feature. You've got your dial down here. So this can navigate you through your menus um, and the wheel settings up here, which we're about to get into. You've got another dial down here, which navigates you through the wheel settings. Obviously, I've got a PlayStation, so PlayStation button, L3, R3. Your capture modes here. Um, options button there, which will take you into the options in the game. Um, L2, R2, and obviously we've already spoke about the paddles on the back. We're going to turn this on, power button to the side here. So hold that, hold that down for a second or two and you will see three dots appear on the screen. And we are powered on. So what you're seeing there is basically clutch, brake, gas, if you're American or if you're British, accelerator. Um, I assume the next one would be handbrake when they release that onto the market. AA and AB, I'm not actually too sure what they are yet. Um, so someone would be able to tell me in the comments section, that would be handy. But you'll see as I'm using the pedals, pressing the pedals down, accelerator, brake and clutch. So that's all the sensitivity mode there. How do we get in? to the settings on the um, actual Logitech. This button here in the corner, you press that and then it brings up your profile. So this is handy, obviously, if you're using your rig and you're having to share it with other family members maybe, or the other feature is if you can set up individual settings for different games maybe. So profile one, for instance, Gran Turismo, profile two, Formula One, profile three, Dirt Rally, so you could have those individual settings to do that. And how I'm navigating through this menu is by using this dial here. So just by turning that, we can navigate through. And there's a button on it here. And by pressing that, it's almost your select button there. Back up to here, profile one. So we've got true force torque setting. I've got that at seven newton meters. True force audio, 40. True force filter, two, force feedback, feedback filter uh, is at eight, the dampener, the angle. So angle is your obviously your steering angle for depending on what cars are being driven. Brake force sensitivity, I've got mine at 20. Now I'll explain why it's so low um, when we get down to the pedals. Left and right paddle, so obviously you can change these, so that one's the clutch, uh, right paddle, I've got down as the handbrake, and the clutch bite, so you can set that, obviously, depending on the sensitivity you want, so obviously, as you're releasing it, it will, it will bite your clutch as a, as a normal car would. RPM mode, so this is for the dials here, you can just see them faintly, so at the moment, I've got it outside in, so as we're 
the engine's uh, revving up, it will meet in the middle and turn blue when I need to change gear. Inside out, start on the end side and work its way out so you will be changing gear on the end mode here. Left to right, obviously just from one to the side to the other, in reverse. Custom one, custom two, I've not actually been through all of them. Um, I think maybe, I don't even know, to be honest with you. RPM brightness, we've got there. Home screen, dynamic test or profile. So I'll keep it on dynamic, and that's that first initial setting that you're seeing when we turn the wheel on, the sensitivity of all the braking, accelerator, etc. Compatibility is obviously the pro wheel. And the platform we are on is PS5. Now I have seen other people complain that they have to select what mode they, or what console they're using every time they turn on the Logitech. But if you just select it in this mode here, you never have to select it again. So that's the settings. We'll talk now a little bit about the pros and cons. The pros, obviously it's direct drive. It's got 11 Newton meters of force. Um, which you really know about as well when you go into a corner too fast and then you're holding on for dear life. Um, the torque's amazing on it. All the in-game settings, obviously, if you just need to make little tweaks here and there, you can do that nice and easily by using these dials. Shifters, almost like magnets, they spring back. In fact, in fact, I think they are magnets, they spring back into place. So you get a really positive feeling when you change your gear through the game. Clutch paddles, not really used them yet because I haven't really played the Formula 1 game or whatever. And the wheel itself, it's not too big, it's not too small. So that's all the pros. The cons is this unit weighs about 8 or 9 kilograms, which if you haven't got it mounted to a, like a hardwood table or a solid surface or a racing rig, you are going to feel it moving you are going to have issues with it. So I recommend getting it bolted or strapped to something that does not move whatsoever. Uh, you'll see a little bit of movement on this rig and I can't do much more about it. You'll, you'll see I've tried making amendments. We'll go through all of them in a moment. The other con. So the first con is the weight. Second con, I would say, is where the stitching is on the wheel, where you grip it, after a couple of hours of racing, it don't take long before it starts like wearing on your thumb, rubbing on your thumb. So it can get that bit sore. So solutions to that, get racing gloves like a lot of people do, or just get on with it. <laughs> just don't moan about it. Concentrate on the racing, not on your thumbs. Uh, that's the only issues that I've got with it. Let's have a look now at the pedals. They are a big old unit, but they are worth it. I'll take you through a couple of the uh, different little settings. So. You've got springs on the clutch and on the accelerator. You also get additional springs provided. They're all different strengths. So you can have a little play around with that. I've got the yellow one set up on the clutch, the red one set up on the accelerator, just to give me a little bit more resistance on that. And the brakes here, they come with like a dampening kit, so you can swap them over. You can work off the chart there, tell you which way to put them in and different resistance, everything else. To do that, it's really easy. If you want to change all the springs and everything out, basically pull back on that, pops out. You literally slide it off, bring there, which you can take off and change. It's harder to do with one hand, but you get the point. Same with the brakes, harder to do with one hand, but pull it towards you. Then you would undo that blue cap and then all the dampeners are in there it's really easy to do they have made it user friendly next is the adjustment on the pedals so if you want to from underneath the rig you can move this clutch pedal for example over to the right you can move the brake pedal left or right you can move the accelerator left or right i've actually moved the brake pedal over to the left just because my leg was rubbing on this frame every time i was trying to brake so I've pulled the brake pedal over by one notch, I think, just to give me that little bit of extra room. Now, they are made out of plastic, the base of it, but 
you wouldn't know, to be honest. It's not, I was a little bit worried about it, but you can't tell once you're racing on it. Everything else is really well made. Pedals are metal, brake, and the throttle plate, that's metal. And you can adjust all of these as well. Two Allen screws there. You can take them off, move it up, down, left, right, wherever it lines up with the rest of the holes there. They've all got that. Pros and cons to the pedals then. Pros, lots of adjustment. You can put them wherever you want, do whatever you want with them. I don't think anyone would struggle to get them in a position they feel comfortable with. They are well made and they are really responsive. Everything works exactly how it should. I don't know if you can quite see on the camera, but obviously you can see I've got a lot of resistance on the brake, which that's how I've set it up. And I've now got a little bit more resistance on the throttle putting that thicker spring in it. The clutch, I've got the light spring with that. The only downside to this spring setup is you only get one of each spring. So for example, you couldn't put a red spring in the clutch one as well. So they only give you one of each. Um, but you make it work, it's, it's not the end of the world that. The only other con that I would say is the sheer size of the things. So if you didn't have this set up on a rig, you might find it difficult to get a comfortable seated position if you had to have the pedals like pushed up against the wall or something. But other than that, I can't say I can fault it in any other way. In conclusion, would I recommend Logitech Pro Direct Drive Wheel and would I recommend the Logitech Pro Load Cell Pedals? Yes, I would. Like I say, we've been over all the pros and cons. I definitely think the pros outweigh the cons. The only thing I would say is that the rig or the surface you're playing on it has to be stable. If you've seen the unboxing video when you see me setting it up on the rig, I've made some adjustments since that video. So I took the rig to the workshop. I've drilled and tapped in two bolts there to stop this from sliding anywhere. Down between my legs, I've tapped it, another two bolts in. And down on the brake pedals, you see those like triangles. So there's one either side and they're uh, drilled, tapped and bolted in just to try and prevent bit of flex now the flex that you do see it's the whole rig so I can't do much more about that There's too many moving parts on this unfortunately but that's the best I'm gonna get has it made me a better racer yes definitely has um, I've been taking a couple of seconds off different lap times here and there but you just get a better feeling for it overall it's much more enjoyable in comparison to the like the G29 that I used to have one thing I haven't mentioned it has got the true force setting as well so Things like rumble strips that you hit or engine vibration, stuff like that. You can tweak those settings so the wheel vibrates on them as well. I've got it turned down, I've sort of still fine tuning it. But the true force setting is very different to the force feedback. So you have to just play around with them to get uh, dial them into what suits you. But yes, it has made me a better racer. Has it made me a better driver in real life? Absolutely not. This was me leaving a customer's house in my work van last week. So unfortunately, I've got to pay to repair someone else's wall. But <laughs> these things happen. Um, I'm much better on track than what I am at reversing, clearly.